Wilhelm Karl Schumann is the great ancestor of the Schumann families, who today farm in the Queenstown district. He emigrated from Prussia in Germany to South Africa in 1855. Wilhelm purchased the farm, Vacherered Val, named by him, in the Woodhouse district between Dordrecht and Elliot in the Eastern Cape. It was here that he became a cattle and sheep farmer, as well as encouraging overseas investment in Cape wool and importing merino rams from Germany. With a courageous spirit, Wilhelm Schumann played a major role in the development of agriculture in South Africa. Wilhelm's only son was William Arthur Schumann, who established his Africana herd on the farm Brosdale in the Elliott district. This was the late 1800s, the age of transport riding. In 1901, William began a transport service known as the Wagon Run between Elliott and Queenstown. These trips would take a week. Two days to Queenstown, a day of delivering and collecting goods, then two days back to Elliot. William Schumann's span was described as a well-matched team of Afrikaner oxen. When stepping out onto a transport road, these large oxen with their wide spread horns were a sight not easily forgotten. The transport rider, together with his oxen and wagon, will always be the true pioneers of South Africa. William Kenneth Schumann, known as Ken, was born in 1904 on the farm Brosdale in the Elliott district. His education began at the Elliott School and later at Marist Brothers College in Utenag. Ken began farming at a young age. When in 1920, his father gave him a gift of a young Africana bull and six heifers for his 16th birthday. William said, I have given you seven cattle, one for each letter of your name and the meaning thereof. K for kindness. E for empathy, N for nurture, N for noble, E for equity, T for trust and H for honor. William relocated from Elliot to Queenstown after purchasing the farm Straitfontaine in the Invani district. He left Ken to begin his career as a farmer on Brosdale, where after a few years, he and his cousin exchanged farms after an agreement was reached. Ken moved on to Grey Craig in 1928, a farm situated on the Black Kai River in the Tilden district near Queenstown. In his profession as a farmer, one of his principal interests was the breeding of Africana cattle. He chose to breed pure-blooded animals because of his desire for good quality. During the early days, he put a lot of time and effort into the training of oxen for draft and plowing purposes. Ken vied with other farmers in turning out spans of oxen with similar colors and markings, as well as build and shape of horns. His red spans were much in demand as his breeder art played an important role in the development of distinct types. Bound by love and sentiment, he was prejudiced against interbreeding. His motto was to keep the Africana pure, is to ensure its existence. The Grey Craig herd was well known for its adaptability and resistance against droughts and diseases. Ken suffered a stroke in 1952, and as a result passed away. Such a short life at the age of 48 years, yet such a full life with so much accomplished. The Africana Cattle Breeders Society praised him, for they felt he advertised the breed and continued in his efforts to improve the conformation of the Africana. A 1930s Grey Craig Africana Herd Advert The British royal family, His Majesty King George VI, Queen Elizabeth, accompanied by Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret, visited South Africa in the year 1947. After a turbulent Second World War had just ended, countries celebrated, seeking new futures filled with positiveness. It was with this spirit in mind that the South African government decided to invite the most famous and powerful royal family in the world, a family that so many South Africans had aspired to for so many years, now was the chance to meet them in real life. So, after much speculation and liaisons between the South African and British governments, the invitation was extended to the monarchy, who happily accepted. Amid much excitement, preparations got underway as South Africa braced itself for a visit of a lifetime. The royal family sailed on HMS Vanguard then toured by means of a white train specially built for the occasion. They journeyed through the country making short stops in South Africa's cities and towns. One such town was Queenstown which had special significance having been named after Her Majesty Queen Victoria. 
they arrived in Queenstown at 9.30 a.m. on 6 March 1947. After plenty of bowing and curtsying, security led the royal family and councillors out of the station building to a procession which had been organised by renowned Queenstown farmer, Ken Schumann. It was said the royal family were very intrigued in seeing the horses. King George went up to Mr Schumann, where they exchanged a handshake and proceeded to have a conversation. Ken having been given the great honour of leading the procession looked very gallant astride his magnificent horse, Alfred, and carrying the Union Jack flag. The royal family stepped into a shiny black Rolls Royce. Following the royal vehicle were eight members of the Border Gymkhana Club. With everything in place, the royal procession set off amidst cheering and waving from crowds of well-wishers lining the streets of Queenstown. After the royal visit to South Africa, Mr Schumann corresponded on a regular basis with King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. They refer to him as their South African friend. Ken extended an open invitation to his farm Grey Craig, should they ever visit South Africa again. He wanted to show them his Africana cattle herd, a breed that the monarchy had not seen before. This visit did not occur because of the king's ailing health and subsequent death in 1952. Ken Schumann said that meeting the royal family in Queenstown will always remain as one of the highlights of his life. A 1960s KS Africana stud advert. Hilson Schumann, owner of the acclaimed KS Africana stud as well as yellow and red, white cattle, farms on Grey Craig which will always be known as home to the Africana in the Queenstown district. The KS stud, registered in 1952 and named after Hilson's father, Ken Schumann, was bred from carefully selected Pringle and Gradwell bloodlines, for the production of heavy carcasses, fertility and hardiness. Achieving many notable results at various agricultural shows, the herd had an enviable reputation for the stock it supplied to breeders in all parts of the Eastern Cape and even Namibia. With its motto, the Africana of the past, built up to be the beef breed of the future, the KS stud was described as cattle of an outstanding caliber which were bred under natural felt conditions. The Yellow Africana, extract from 1971 article. Having a great love for the Yellow Africana he decided in 1965, to make an attempt at breeding a pure herd. Hilson has always described the yellow Africana as not just a beautiful color, but a distinct type, a well-built beef type with a good constitution, that has been used by leading breeders to maintain body conformation amongst their red herds. In his efforts to breed a pure herd, he sought advice from the Commonwealth Bureau of Animal Breeding and Genetics in Edinburgh, Scotland. Hilson Schumann's endeavor was acknowledged as a first by the Africana Cattle Breeder Society in Bloemfontein. It is his name that will be remembered as the only farmer to substantiate the fact that it is inconceivable to breed a pure yellow Africana herd. The Red and White Africana. Extract from 1961 article. A childhood dream to possess a herd of Skeller Africanas was realized last week, when Mr. Hilson Schumann of Grey Craig returned from the Orange Free State, after successfully negotiating a deal for the purchase of eight of these red and white Africana cattle from Mr. Petrus van Billion of Abraham's Kral. While these animals do not enjoy the same popularity as the pure red or yellow strain of the breed, they have an identical build and other characteristics. It is only since the establishment of the Africana herd book in 1912, that breeders have concentrated on the breeding of pure red Africanas, as only these are accepted for registration. It is believed that this will be the first red and white Africana herd in the Eastern Cape, and Mr. Schumann is to be congratulated on his timeless decision to prevent them from becoming extinct. Thank you.